So let's uh, grab a spot and we'll sit down, we'll do a couple stretches. All right, so to start with, uh, we're just sitting down, just gonna sit as tall as you can. Let's kind of uh, half cross-legged. So, you know, if you're gonna be cross-legged, you bring the other leg in like this. Let's just sit with one leg up and the other leg under. So this gives us a chance to try to get both, you know, you should uh, have both butt bones on the ground and trying to get this shin working towards the ground. Mine doesn't get there. Uh, so as you're, as you're sitting into this stretch, the stretch should be up in your hip, not pressure on your knee. So if you're feeling like pressure on your knee or that you're like turning your knee sideways, like I mentioned before, it's kind of like, you know, if you're really tight in your hip, you're going to get the stress in your knee. So if you feel that stress in your knee, adjust the stretch a little bit so that you can feel it in your hip. Let's go ahead and switch sides. So again, it's, it's like you're cross, sitting cross-legged, but we're going to just keep that one leg tall and almost, you can give it a hug and sit up tall. You might notice a difference from side to side. I know I noticed a big difference. But again, try to get equal pressure on both butt bones. And then you're letting that other knee drop down towards the ground, feeling the stretch in your hip, not pressure in your knee. Let's go back to the original side, holding underneath. This time, instead of sitting on both butt bones equally and having your knee up, let's take your knee to the ground. So now your, your shin's gonna be along the ground. And from there, you keep your knee on the ground and try to work to both butt bones. It's kind of like, at one point, you either have one or the other. All right, let's go ahead and switch to the other side. So this time we're taking your butt bones off the ground. We're letting that knee hit the ground. Mm -hmm. And we're working our way back. Trying to get both butt bones on the ground, but the priority on this one is keeping your knee or your shin on the ground. And good. All right, let's bring uh, one leg in. So we're just bringing one leg in, sitting on both butt bones. Bring your foot in as far as you can, sitting nice and tall. And switch it up to the other side. Nice even pressure on both butt bones. Sitting up nice and tall. And back to the original side. Switch one more time, it should be on the second side. All right, from here, we're gonna start working a little bit. Let's bring that foot in as close as you can to you. We're gonna lean forward and start to put some weight on it. Okay, so if you need fingertips to kind of bring yourself up on top of that foot, you can use fingertips for right now, All right? Um, another thing that can help you here, so what we're gonna to progress to is, is leaning forward and getting on top of it. Leaning forward and getting on top of that foot. If uh, you have something around like a foam roller, all right, you can use that, sit on the foam roller, same position you bring this foot in, and then we come forward, put some pressure onto it, 
actually the roller is kind of nice because it allows you to just roll forward onto it. Um, you can also just use fingertips. It kind of depends on how far you are away from getting up on top. Um, so let's try that and work on that for about a minute here. We're just gonna, you can work on one side where you're coming up. So for me, bring the left foot in and I'm coming up on top of the foot. Okay, so we're just trying to work our hips up off the ground there. I'm gonna tune in and take a look. It helps too if you reach forward with your hands. And so it, it also helps if you can get your heel close to your butt before you start. So the closer you can pull your heel in towards the butt, the less you have to um, like lunge forward to get over top of it. So if you can just shift your weight a little bit, it helps you get up on top. Okay, and if you got that one, the next step would be to stand. Okay, so I don't know if we're doing this yet this morning, but the next step would be to get here, stand up, and then back down, probably with more control than that. Okay, good. All right, so let's roll over to all fours. Feet are, or knees are gonna be just a little bit wider than hips. We're gonna sit back, so what we're trying to do here is make this like a squat position, like a deep squat position. So, you know, if I were standing up, this would be that, that deep squat position. You know, if you just took me and stood me up. Um, so we want tailbone up here. Don't let your, don't let your back round and your tailbone sink under. So we try to keep your tailbone pointed up towards the ceiling, just sitting back towards your heels. And let's just rock forward and back. Sit into the stretch there. If you're not feeling the stretch, there's a couple things you can do. Really try to push your tailbone up would be the first one. Second one would be maybe adjusting the position of your feet in or out, or adjusting the position of your knees in or out. So we're really trying to sit back in between your feet here. Starting to work your way into the stretch. All right, uh, before we go ahead and stand up, we're gonna bring, let's just come up to all fours like a crawl position. So now my knees are off the ground. Okay, you're in that foot hand crawl position. We're just gonna hold here. We're gonna hold for about 30 seconds just to get things warmed up. You can adjust your position as you need to, but we're just holding this crawling position Try to split the weight evenly between your hands and your feet. Let's hold for 10 more seconds. And good, let's go ahead and stand. We are gonna get into that deep squat, so if it helps you to have a roller or something around, Right, so we're getting into the squat where we're squatting down nice and long uh, into the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to hang out at the bottom here. And if you don't need the roller or something to sit on to make it comfortable, you don't need it. But we're just hanging out at the bottom here sort of the, the standing version of the stretch that we just did. So you can imagine if we were in all fours, it's a really similar stretch, but you can take your hands, push knees out, make knees out wide. And let's go ahead and stand. So from here, let's just do five reps, just like that. When you get to the bottom, wherever the bottom of your squat is, it might be, you know, with the edge of your butt resting on the couch. Um, maybe you have something cushions that you can stack up. Okay, so whatever you need, we're just going to squat down, hang out at the bottom for a three count. 
and stand back up. Try to press with nice even pressure through your feet. Good job, guys. So we're just doing five of these. Okay. So just to uh, Continue a little bit with warm up here. We're gonna go, we're gonna take a knee. So you'll start from standing. You'll go down, take a knee, take two knees, and then come up with the other leg. So the first knee that I took was my left. So I'm gonna bring my left up, All right? So you're just kind of going right, left, right, left here. Okay, let's do five of these and then we'll switch directions. So we're just kneeling down, switching knees, coming back up. Sorry if you have a wood floor and no pad. That's why we switched to the carpet today. All right, once you get five to one direction as you stand up, now we're gonna lunge back. And again, this is just kind of working on that ability to be hands-free as you get up off the floor. As you're transitioning at the bottom, so as you're going from one knee to the other, try to limit the movement with your upper body. Okay, so we wanna keep that balance, keep yourself from rocking side to side. Okay. Good, and then let's go ahead and take uh, one knee. So we're back down to a knee here. Let's push forward into a lunge stretch. So usually we talk about keeping your tailbone tucked under. This time we really wanna step and reach forward. And we'll step not only straight forward, but keep your belly button facing the same direction. Just turn your knee out to the side. So let's cycle through those for five each. And switch it up for the other side here. And then we'll get into our circuit. Uh, so we'll go ahead and stand. Circuit today, uh, we're gonna do some two foot jumps. So we'll, this time the, the exception is, or usually we'll like in a every other day circuit, we'd be just doing like a squat jump where we jump straight up. Okay, today we're gonna be jumping to make progress. So we'll do a two foot jump. Um, and you know, you might get two jumps, have to turn around just depending on the space that you have. But what we want is, just two jumps, jumping forward. So two feet on the ground, hands come back, jumping forward, nice soft landing. You're landing and you're where you were on takeoff. So if you took a freeze frame here as I was about to jump, okay, this angle right here is how you should land for the next jump. Okay, so depending on your room, you might only get one jump um, each direction or whatever. Uh, so we're going to go 10 jumps total, 10 jumps total, um, focusing on landing. Landing is most important here. Okay, so 10 jumps, then we'll crawl. So whatever direction you need or whatever space you can use, you can go any direction, forward, backwards, sideways. We're just keeping knees off the ground. 
and just keeping these off the ground, moving around in the area that you have. Okay, the last one is just gonna be working towards that hands-free um, switch from side to side. So sitting with one hip turned in, one hip turned out. Right, and then we're gonna take those, take that and switch sides. All right, so this is more of a, a stretch. You may get some work out of it just because if you have to put your fingertips back um, or if, you have, if you're doing it hands-free, you do get a little bit of work out of it. So we're just switching side to side and we'll switch side to side 10 times total. Okay, so um, as we go through here, I guess, count about 20 seconds. Uh, we won't put it on the timer, but count about 20 seconds for the crawl, 10 switches from 90-90 this way to 90-90 this way, okay, and then 10 jumps. Okay, so we'll, um, we'll go an eight minute circuit here, just doing those three exercises. So we go crawl, jump, and then 90, 90 hips, switching back and forth. Okay, so we get a little bit of work. Um, and then, yeah, working on that jump, working on that landing, make sure everything is super strong on the landing, okay? All right, so I'll set a eight minute timer here. I'll keep you in the loop as to where we are. And you can go at your pace in whatever order you wanna go. Okay, so we're gonna start our eight minutes, ready, and here we go. Making sure on the crawl that you're keeping your back nice and flat, like a tabletop. As you're crawling along, pretend you're sneaking up on somebody, keeping things nice and quiet, nice and smooth. Remember on the jump, we're trying from two feet to two feet. So we take off with two feet, land on two feet. I think a lot of times it ends up kind of looking like a little hop like that. So let's make sure we take off on two, land on two. Five and a half minutes left, guys. Almost three minutes down here. So if you're doing the 90-90 hips, 
Check in each time, try to get both butt cheeks to the ground. Might not happen or probably won't happen. Then each time you go side to side, checking in, trying to get both cheeks to the ground. This is one of those things that when you start off with it, you think there's no way that you're gonna to get to it with, with either no hands or getting both cheeks to the ground. But this really is a skill that you get better at. So it's kind of your body starts to let you go through movements once you realize, or once your body realizes it's safe to do it. So things start to loosen up. And it's, uh, it's kind of like, it's not improving flexibility, it's just that your body is less tight. Your nervous system is more likely to let things go a little bit more. On the jumps, if you think about, uh, just giving you a couple things to think about on the jumps. If you think about when you go to jump or when you go to take off, make your belly strong like you just sneezed. All right, so when you're strong from here to here, you're able to produce more force. You're able to push harder, right? So when you take off, make it strong like you just sneezed, make your belly strong like you just sneezed, and you'll find that you get a much more, I guess, effortless jump. And then when you land, it's the same thing. So we're turning it on again, making your belly nice and strong. As your feet hit the floor, you're thinking about putting a little pressure outside or into the outside of your feet so that when you land, you're kind of landing and spreading the carpet apart with your feet. So as I land, I'm, I'm pushing this way with my feet. And it just helps to turn on the hips and keeps you from landing with the knees caved in like that. So we don't want that, we wanna be nice and strong. So strong belly, spread the floor apart when you land. Two minutes and 10 seconds left. If you wanna uh, put some things out to jump over, that would probably work too. So if you have like some couch cushions or anything that you wanna to add to it, go for it. Last minute here, guys. Probably get through two, two more of the things, maybe three. Again, this morning is just about moving around, getting things loosened up. Twenty seconds left, and we are going to take a second, just sit for a minute in one of those resting postures. I should, uh, I'm going to put that in the members Facebook group. Put some more information about the resting postures because it's it's pretty cool stuff. Um, if you want to learn more about it, all right. So that's our time. Let's just hang out here for a second. You choose how you want to sit. Okay, we can sit in a 
in a kneeling position here. You can sit cross-legged. You can sit on your butt with your legs straight out in front of you. I'm gonna use this as a stretch. So my shins and ankles aren't very flexible, so I'm just gonna use this as sort of a stretch. After I've warmed up a bit, it's a little more comfortable to do, easier to do. And if you can sit up tall here, you're gonna open up that space in between your belt buckle and your shoulders. And make that as big and tall and wide as you can. If you are choosing to sit on top of your feet, uh, make sure that your heels aren't turned all the way out to the side. Right, so try to get your heels under your butt. They're going to turn out a little bit, but they shouldn't be like splayed way out. That puts a lot of stress on your knee. So just sitting down, taking a few nice deep breaths. Recovery here is going to be a little quicker and easier than it would be for uh, most, or quicker than most morning circuits. Just because the heart rate didn't get that high, this is more about moving around, getting all the joints uh, lubed up and moving, working on some mobility. Let's take about five more nice deep breaths. Try to breathe down into your belly and open up your ribs. So we wanna breathe into everything. Front, back, sides. One more breath. And we call it a day. All right, great job guys. Um, tomorrow back at it, bringing the intensity back up. I will post in the, with this uh, recording in the Facebook group, I'm gonna add the information about the resting postures, so really cool stuff uh, and where all that comes from and, and how we know. So uh, people who are way smarter than me did it. So it's uh, much better than just listening to me. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, check out the article I'll post and have an awesome day. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Brian. You got it.